If you want to do something special for Valentine's Day but want to save money, might I suggest a romantic night in? I'm going to be making heart-shaped cheese ravioli with a homemade tomato sauce. So if all that sounds good to you, stay tuned! For full recipe, ingredients, equipment, tips, and more, check out the video description below. So I am making a very basic tomato sauce with only these ingredients, red pepper flakes, Italian seasoning, I buy it in bulk because it's cheaper, some garlic cloves, a whole can of diced tomatoes, I think that's around 30 ounces, and just a little bit of olive oil to get things lubricated. So you're going to start by rough chopping the garlic and putting it in a large skillet with a teaspoon or so of the oil. You don't necessarily want to brown brown these, you just want to make them fragrant. And dump in those tomatoes, dump in the Italian seasoning and the red pepper flakes. I don't put any salt in this because I have a lower salt tolerance than most people, and canned tomatoes are already salty, but if you want salt, add salt. And then you want to gently simmer this for about 30 minutes total until it looks kind of like this. It's going to be mostly dry, there's going to be little faint pools of uh, wetness here and there, and that looks chunky, but we're going to fix that with this lovely KitchenAid food processor. This is my favorite food processor, and I got a link in the description below if you want to buy it. Anyway, you put the chunky tomato sauce in there by magic, and then you put the lid on, and you're just going to want to pulse this until it comes together into a smooth sauce. Now a note, if you've seen uh, my other recipe for tomato sauce, usually I like to put red wine in my sauce, but I left it out this time so that it will be red. See how beautifully red it is? For Valentine's Day. Now you can make this ahead of time, and I highly encourage you to do so, and keep it in your fridge or freezer until you need it. But I was going to use it right away, so I put it right back in the pan so it could stay warm and I could heat it up easily. But yeah, totally, make this in advance before you're going to make your ravioli because these ravioli, oh boy, they take a very long time to make and you're not going to want to bother with sauce on Valentine's Day. So you're going to need equal parts, one cup each, semolina flour and all-purpose flour, and a little salt, probably about a quarter to a half a teaspoon and you're just going to combine the dry ingredients and then make a well in there to put eggs. About semolina flour, I like the flavor of it and I like that it helps give the pasta a little bit uh, more of a bite to it, but if you use 100% semolina, I find that the pasta dough is just a little too tough, so I like to cut it with all-purpose flour. And you can, of course, also use all all-purpose flour, but I like both. So make a well and dump your three eggs in there. This turned out to be the absolute perfect ratio of wet to dry for me on this particular day with those particular sized eggs, but your experience may differ. So if you find that your mixture is a little too dry, you can add a little bit of water or milk. And if you find that your mixture is a little too wet, just add a little more all-purpose flour. But you should stir and stir with your spoon until it's getting a little bit cumbersome to stir, and you switch to your mighty hand. Your hand is a wonderful stirring tool, and this will also help you gauge how wet or how dry your dough is. And like I said, this dough is like the perfect ratio of wet to dry, and you'll notice it's looking really shaggy and it's sticking to my hand and parts of it are still dry at the bottom of the bowl, but don't worry, after some diligent mixing and turning it out onto a board and kneading it for a good five minutes or so, you're gonna get a nice smooth cohesive dough. Now about that kneading, <laughs> you really do need to knead this dough. It is very tough um, and it's going to take a lot of elbow grease, but it's definitely worth it. And the reason why we're doing this is to properly hydrate the flowers to make sure that all the moisture is evenly incorporated and to also help give the pasta a nice chew to it. If you don't develop that gluten, it won't have a very good chew. So we have our smooth kneaded pasta dough and I'm gonna set this aside. Now this step also, please by all means do this in advance. Do this a day or two before you plan on making the ravioli. It will keep in your fridge until you're ready to do it. I however made all of these things on one day so you know <laughs> I was very tired afterwards. Now to make the ravioli filling. I have four mozzarella string cheeses. I like to buy it a uh, 
packaged like that because it lasts longer, but you don't have to buy it like that. I also have some Parmesan cheese and some ricotta for our three cheese ravioli. And I have another KitchenAid food processor. This one's a mini chopper. And you'll notice, hey Sarah, that looks kind of cloudy like you've been using it already. And yes, I grated some mozzarella cheese earlier in it, so it's not technically dirty because I'm just gonna put more cheese in there. About a three quarters of a cup of chopped mozzarella cheese and about a quarter cup of finely diced Parmesan cheese. And you're just gonna pulse that until it is until it resembles wet sand. As you can see, if you press it together, it holds its shape a little bit, but it crumbles apart nicely. That's a good sign. Now you're going to awkwardly put the cup of ricotta cheese in there. Don't worry, it all fits. The mini chopper is just the right size for this task. And you're gonna pulse that in there just to combine all of the cheeses together and make them nice and smooth. Ooh. And our cheese mixture's ready. And you can also make that in advance too, and I encourage you to. Now the pasta dough, I'm gonna cut this big block into four. Now this turned out to make about four servings of the ravioli and a serving of the ravioli is about eight raviolis total, eight to 10 raviolis total. Now the laborious process of rolling it out. <laughs> this also is a real workout and it takes a lot of patience, but you just have to stick with it and keep flipping flour your surface as needed, but try not to incorporate too much flour in there and just keep going and going and going until you get that pasta as thin as humanly possible. Look how thin it's gotten. It's, com it's almost covering my entire cutting board right now. You'll thank me later when you have beautiful ravioli. So see, you can kind of see my fingers through it, but it's not falling apart thin. Now this little heart-shaped cookie cutter is how we're going to form our ravioli tops and bottoms. You have to press down pretty hard, harder than you would with a cookie dough for sure. And you're gonna have to jiggle it a lot on the cutting board and really press hard to get nice clean hearts out of there. And you could honestly just stop here if you don't feel like making ravioli, but you just make the heart-shaped pasta. You know, you could just do that, and that would already be cute. But we're gonna stack them on top of each other with cheese and make ravioli. I'm getting some water, not to drink, to put on my fingers, because we are going to paint the outside edges of these hearts with water. Only one of the two hearts that you're going to sandwich together, not both hearts. Now, these are so tiny that the water winds up getting pretty much on the entire surface of the heart, and that's totally okay. Now, when you're putting the cheese mixture in the ravioli, this is true with any shaped ravioli, but it's especially difficult with these heart-shaped ravioli. You have to kind of arrange it into the shape of the heart, and you have to make sure that you leave about a quarter of an inch or eighth of an inch of the pasta exposed on the edge. It's really tempting to overfill these, uh, but you'll learn after your first couple of ravioli just how much to put in. And this was my very first ravioli, so I think I, actually miraculously, I had like just the right amount of filling in this ravioli. And so you just wanna gently, carefully, patiently go around and press the sides together. <laughs> Try to match them up as evenly as you can. This was my first one, so it was a little bit messy. And it's okay if your filling uh, gets out a little tiny bit like that. Just kind of smear it and wipe it off with your fingers. And then a good idea is to press the edges of your ravioli further with your fingers after you've formed it. And there you go. 16 raviolis, and that took forever. Definitely break this up over several days. I'm so exhausted. Look at all the dishes. So as for these scraps, you can cook those up and just eat them like pasta. They look weird, but they're totally edible, so eat them. Now the water should be barely simmering. We want to very gently simmer these ravioli because you don't want them to burst open on you after all that effort that you made to very carefully form these ravioli and it took you like an hour to do it. You wanna make sure that they stay together. So very gently simmering water, drop them in carefully one at a time. Once they've been floating for about two to three minutes, they're done. And again, very gently and carefully transfer them into a strainer. 
Don't just dump them into the strainer like you would regular pasta. And rejoice because none of them burst open. I think this is a first for me. This is like the first time I've ever made ravioli and they didn't burst. So that sauce that we made earlier, heat it up. And I'm arranging it in like a circle on a nice dinner plate. And then I'm gonna put one of those portobello mushrooms that I made in the last episode right in the center. And then I'm gonna decorate evenly around the circumference with the heart-shaped raviolis. And that's why I made eight per person. And a little sprig of parsley in the center, and there you have it. An elegant and romantic dinner for Valentine's Day, or any day, really. I hope you share this with your sweetheart, along with a heart-shaped tiramisu in the center, which I will show you in the next episode. And as you can see, cutting the ravioli open, they're so cheesy and delicious, and these really were a real hit. So that was our romantic Valentine's Night Inn. Obviously, as I'm recording this video now, it is before Valentine's Day. That's just how it works out when you have a cooking channel on YouTube. We have other Valentine's Day food plans, which I'm not gonna make a video of, but if you add me on the Facebook, at Sarah K Loves Food. I will most likely put up some pictures and a little blurb about that then. Hope you guys have a great Valentine's Day. Bye.